Hi and uh, welcome back. So we're moving on to our second module and we're staying with some chemistry but we're moving on to organic chemistry. And so we're going to start with the most important atom in organic chemistry, carbon. Now uh, some scientists will say that organic chemistry is a study of carbon and hydrogen containing uh, molecules um, and that's fine uh, but we're going to restrict ourselves to organic chemistry by definition being all about carbon. So let's start off with taking a look at uh, the atom carbon. So there are three really important things you should know and understand about carbon that will make everything else a lot easier. And when I say a lot easier is what I mean is that you can take that knowledge and you can apply it and use it in lots and lots of scenarios. And so rather than to memorize a lot of stuff, you can just apply what you know. And so um, here are the three things that you need to, to know and understand about carbon. First of all, it's atomic structure. We'll look at that in a moment. It's valence, and we'll look at that when we look at atomic structure. And then relative electronegativity. So let's start at the bottom of that list with relative electronegativity. Now, we talked about electronegativity already, but let's just quickly review that. Uh, electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract electrons. And so if we put uh, two carbon atoms next to one another and had them share electrons so they form a covalent bond, they're going to pull equally on the electrons and that carbon-carbon bond would be non-polar because the electrons are pulled equally towards each of the carbon atoms. Now if we put a carbon and a hydrogen atom next to one another and they shared electrons and formed a covalent bond, carbon and hydrogen have about the same electronegativity. They are different but our, for our purposes we're going to say that they're, they're equivalent. And so again that bond between a carbon and a hydrogen atom would also be nonpolar. Now, if we put a carbon next to an oxygen atom and they shared electrons and formed a covalent bond, remember that oxygen is much more electronegative than carbon. We could also say that carbon is much less electronegative than oxygen, or we could say that the oxygen uh, relative to the carbon is electronegative and the carbon is electropositive. So, the bottom line there is if we put an oxygen and a carbon together and they share electrons form a covalent bond. So what will happen is the electrons will be pulled towards the more electronegative oxygen and you'll end up with a uh, polar covalent bond because this negative charge on the electron spends more time close to the oxygen. And the same is true with carbon and nitrogen when they share electrons and form a covalent bond. So that's the relative electronegativity of carbon. Uh, let's move on and look at the atomic structure of carbon. So here's a carbon atom, and you can see we've got a nucleus in the atom, and there are a number of protons and neutrons. The protons are in red and have a positive charge, a single positive charge, and the neutrons are in white, and they have uh, no net charge at all. That's why they're called neutrons. And then there are two orbitals for electrons, and these, these are kind of um, three-dimensional space around the nucleus where you're going to find, there's a probability that you'll find um, electrons. And so in this inner shell or this inner orbital, there are two electrons, and then in the outer orbital, there are four electrons. And so um, you may recall from high school chemistry or from something I said in an earlier video, that atoms to become most stable, uh, with the exception of hydrogen, atoms to become as stable as they can uh, want to meet what's called the octet rule. And this means that the outer shell would have eight electrons. And the way that these atoms uh, meet the octet rule and get eight electrons is by sharing electrons with other atoms. And that's how um, uh, covalent bonds form. And so carbon here has got four electrons, one, two, three, four in its outer shell. And to, to, to meet the octet rule, it needs another four. And it would do that by forming covalent bonds. And of course, a covalent bond is the sharing of electrons between two atoms, and that results in the two atoms being tightly bound together. So carbon can share its electrons with other atoms. And so it can form four single covalent bonds, because that's a sharing of two electrons between atoms, and that would give it a total of eight. Or it could uh, it could it could form two double bonds, and that would be the sharing of four electrons, um, and that would also give it its eight electrons in its outer shell. So that's the valence. The valence of carbon is four. It can make four covalent bonds with other with other atoms, and that gives it 
very, you know, a very high uh, diversity of arrangements in which we can put it. So let's look at some of those arrangements really quickly. So um, here are some arrangements of, of carbon containing molecules. So um, the top left there is a really simple molecule that's propionic acid. And you can see that it's just a chain of carbons with some other atoms uh, covalently bound to it. So that's the first thing you can do with carbon is you can make chains of it. And so we're going to see a lot of carbon chains as we move into some of the macromolecules. Then um, in the middle at the top there, this, this molecule in the middle here, that's that's glucose. And glucose is, is like, it's the central molecule in biology. It's a really important molecule in biology. It's used for a whole ton of other things. And so there, the carbons, um, you can see some carbons as a carbon here, um, but where these lines all come together, that's a carbon too. And so there's one there, and there's another one here, another one down here. So where all these lines come together, you also see carbon atoms there. So in the glucose, there's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, and they're arranged in a ring. So this is another kind of architecture you can make using carbon. You can arrange into rings, and then you can add all these other atoms, um, and we'll, we'll talk about functional groups that these atoms are arranged into as we move on. Uh, so then this molecule here is, uh, again, relatively simple. It's just a hydrocarbon, not no interest in biology, but it shows us another thing you can do with carbon. That's isobutane. Um, so as I'm showing you these, I want you to not focus on the molecule and memorizing the molecule and its structure, but seeing what you can do with carbon because of its valence of four. Um, so isobutane there is, is a branched chain. So the chain of carbons here, three, two, and four there, those form a chain. And then this carbon one here is forming a branch. And so we can form branch chains. And you can see that those branches and these chains are arising because carbon can form four bonds. Now, there are some other atoms that can form uh, up to four bonds. Some can form more than that. Um, um, but generally they form less. So hydrogen over here in our in, uh, in our propionic acid has got, has got uh, is only forming one bond. Oxygen can form two. Um, so this is important to know is the, the actual valences of all these atoms. Um, but I'm not looking for you to memorize these structures and their names, but more to understand the diversity of structures you can get from carbon and be able to explain why you can get that diversity. And then we can bring all these different types of structures together. And down here, uh, this is a biologically interesting and important molecule. This is an antibiotic. It's a erythromycin. So this is given for, for certain bacterial infections. Um, so you can see we've got basically a big chain of carbon here and then we've got some branches off the chain and then we've got some uh, some some more uh, circles, uh, some more um, cyclical carbon structures. And so we can arrange these carbon based structures into all kinds of complex forms. And so this is what makes carbon the basis of organic life. It is ability to form straight chains, rings or cyclical structures and branch chains and then to bring all those different structures together to get an amazing uh, diversity and complexity in biological and non-biological molecules as well. Um, so uh, that's it. That's a, just a real quick introduction to um, some organic chemistry from the perspective of carbon and then we're going to start using that next and look at some, some different types of, of molecules in a little bit.